So, without further ado, I want to present you with um, Mary Brana, who's the artist behind all of the work here tonight. She's going to do a little talk about the pieces in the exhibition, um, and then we'll follow it with a quick question and answer period. Okay. I think it's going to approach 10 degrees tonight, something like that. Um, so I really appreciate that. Uh, there are a couple of different series happening. This, this um, body of work right here was created specifically for this exhibition. This exhibition is called The Midnight Garden. And for me, that means that moment at night where you're sitting alone and you're thinking and you're ruminating about the experiences, the things that you've gone through, those feelings that um, you have uh, in privacy. And that time that you have alone where no one is expecting anything from you or a lot of people are expecting a lot of things from you, um, as I learned when I became a mom a year and a half ago. So this experience is about being in the middle of being awake and feeling like you are also in the middle of going to sleep and that like weird liminality between awake and asleep. And so uh, there's a series that uh, expresses that sentiment in two words right there, and we'll get to that. So, so the Midnight Garden. <laughs> this work right here, um, this one is about the brevity of life. And so this is my daughter's hospital baby that they gave her when she was born in July of 2020. And so uh, that was a really, uh, I guess, like really pure pivotal moment in my life. And so this veil over here is Pakistani. Um, I myself am Pakistani. I was born in Long Island, um, and I was raised in Long Island. Then I moved to Florida. And then shortly after, life is very short. Um, so like I'd say 18 years after, I moved here to Oklahoma. And uh, I'm currently 30 years old. And this was my wedding meal. And so um, the embroidery was not done by me. It was done by uh, someone who specializes in that in Pakistan. So the, it was made uh, with the intention of not being shown in this space, but for my wedding. And um, this is a very traditional uh, garment, and the color was uh, something of my choice. The designs were something that I chose, um, and my mom had specifically gone to Pakistan to get my wedding clothes, which is uh, an experience a lot of uh, girls that are in America and overseas from Pakistan have. So that is um, a little bit about that work. So this series here uh, is one that is ongoing. This is called A Place to Call Home, and it reflects my identity and where I feel in between identities as uh, an American Pakistani um, and sometimes not feeling uh, totally American or being told I'm not totally American in certain situations. Um, and then going to Pakistan and not quite speaking in the way that I um, sound like I could be from there. So uh, always feeling like you're from somewhere but not quite where you are in the moment. So a lot of these works um, reflect the preciousness and uh, a place for me to feel like I belong when uh, the tangible world is not that place. So uh, one example of that is this is called Sirens and uh, the title of this uh, Pain is adapted from a program song. So um, I was just thinking about uh, identity and how people uh, sometimes feel like I could be someone who, uh, someone who's really different than uh, others. And then I could also have that view of uh, people that I don't know yet. But we're all very much uh, going through the same struggles and the same experiences. Um, the things that make us different should be understood and not erased either. So um, this one is called Giving Up the Ghost, and my brother, uh, he was into video game production. And so this work is a lot about, the aesthetics of this work, I should say, are a lot about uh, that experience of growing up, playing Nintendo games, Mario games, and uh, 
looking at modernity and the past and comparing uh, what that looks like, yet still having that kind of like technological look. Um, so uh, when I look at this work, I feel a lot of uh, motion and a lot of movement, and so uh, that's what was always important to me. Um, this work is another one I'd like to highlight. This is the flagship image of this show. This one actually is probably uh, the most emotional work for me because uh, it has to do with uh, two deaths that I've experienced um, of people who are close to me. Um, one was my 14 uh, year old student when I was a teacher. I was a teacher in Tampa, Florida for uh, five years. And so uh, there's a student of mine whose mother was, uh, had passed away uh, because of cancer. And so she had also, uh, she also gotten cancer as well. And um, we, uh, we visited her and uh, on the same day that she passed away, my 24-year-old cousin had passed away after um, giving birth due to uh, complications. Um, so on the same day, those two things happened, and so it felt really important. I couldn't make it to my cousin's funeral in Canada, but I made it to my student's funeral, and I saw her. Um, I went to the grave site as well, and I saw her being buried, and I just felt um, I felt like this was too important to just um, not feel and show anything about. So this work is about something beautiful being beyond the life that we're currently living and experiencing. So for me, this is a very optimistic piece. When I um, left that school in order to go to Oklahoma um, and move here, I did this painting uh, in form of a mural, and you can see that on my website uh, in that school I taught in Tampa. So the others that have experienced uh, loss in their lives could hopefully find some optimism um, in the great beyond and future for uh, those that have passed. Something better than what we're in now. And um, so this is the Bellum series, and the Bellum series is what I did for my PFA grad show in. 2014 <laughs> in Florida State University in Tallahassee, Florida. And so this right here is a new collection of works that I made uh, specifically to be to be a uh, debut tonight at the Milton Gallery. And so these works are miniatures, and miniatures are inspired by uh, Persian miniatures and local miniatures that were done a long time ago. So these are modern miniature paintings and Saya, so the term Saya Kalam, so this is kind of like phase two of that series because I'm not the same person. It is almost 10 years uh, since then. And I moved to Oklahoma, I got married, I had a baby. Um, I had lots of changes in my life. And so I wanted to uh, depict that new era that I am currently experiencing. So Saya uh, Kalam, excuse me, is a term that is the second. So Helen is the first uh, phase of miniature painting, and so that uh, Helen refers to a pen. And in that uh, case, it's like pencil, the pencil line work that you do. And um, Sia Helen, uh, Sia Helen, uh, that means block pen, and so that refers to the line work that you do. And so there's a lot of black ink and black pen used in this work, and black is a prominent color. So, um, so that is the reflection that I wanted this work to have, as well as just showing some of the recent experiences and imagery that the things that have caught, me, caught my eye, excuse me, since I made that series. And so I was able to visit Pakistan about two years ago. Actually, this time two years ago I was there, and. Uh, I think that my reflection as someone who is now 30, as opposed to being 21 when I went last time, is very different. So this is that series. And the reason it is, it is exposed like this without any glass is because I want um, the intimacy between the viewer 
and the artwork to be uh, to be there. I want it to be tense. I want you to be able to feel like you can look at the work without touching it. <laughs> so uh, when I said this series could be described in two words, um, this is the name of this series. It's called Sleep, Walk, Daydream, and that's that um, that's that weird period between being way too tired to feel like you're awake and being way too awake to feel like you could fall asleep. So these works reflect that. Uh, this one is called Awake Like Me, and this shows um, those moments during quarantine and life when I was just looking outside of my windows and seeing the different, um, the different uh, windows of my neighbors and feeling like, oh, someone is awake in our neighborhood just like me. Um, or most people are asleep on my So, And there are three more over here. The first painting I did in this series, and this one is called Fireworks in Anaheim. And the fireworks idea is because of the smoke over here, but also the palm trees, and I thought that they kind of looked like explosions that were colorful. And um, in a lot of Pakistani and Persian culture, you see uh, you see pomegranates. And so uh, in my time in California, fruit was abundant. Um, I had an artist residency there. And uh, my family lived there right before I was born. So I felt like a connection to that area. And so uh, the abundance of fruit, my time in Joshua Tree in Anaheim, in that area, um, really had an impact on me. Um, this idea of nighttime is reflected in this bed over here. This is a crib, not whatever else it might look like. <laughs> so um, the crib sits at the foot of our bed, and that's, that's the idea over here. And so uh, during my pregnancy, I was bedridden for a little while and um, asked to stay in bed and not move. And this was when I was in Pakistan. So um, it was right before COVID hit. So I was very fortunate by like maybe a week that I wasn't stuck over there beyond uh, what I was hoping to stay for. And so I was thinking of how I would look outside of the window again and see these streets that I just couldn't walk in at that time. And just being where I am right now, that was really fortunate. Um, and some of you might be able to relate, but also right after you have your baby, you're like, when am I going to be myself again? When am I going to, when am I going to experience just walking and sitting normally and not thinking too much about every single thing that my body does? And so this is a way, I think, to celebrate where I am now. And uh, I definitely felt like I was like trapped in a space, but also felt like I had seen um, ways that I could be taken care of and uh, accept that care from others. So that's what this work uh, reflects. And this work, I believe, is called Tight Spaces. And this one is called Parade One. And so uh, something in my childhood that I was really attracted to was that scene in Dumbo where uh, it's really crazy. And um, as an adult, I realize now that Dumbo was drunk. And so that really beautiful like um, Fantasia kind of look that I had seen at that time I started to do art as I got older and later realized there was a word for that art and it was called psychedelic. And I was like, people do what I do. And I thought I was just, I thought I came up with it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I did not. <laughs> and so uh, it's, a lot of my work is influenced by the things I saw as a kid. And um, what's crazy is thinking that there is a person on this world who is influenced by the things that I am doing now my daughter. And so um, even while making these works, if you look closely, you will see the crayon marks that she <laughs> that she did right here on this piece. And so this work is about that. I, I see loneliness and isolation and alienation um, 
carefully because they think it has different interpretations for each person. But that kind of solitude, I think is a more neutral word, solitude of walking alone at night and how you can also appreciate life a little bit more when it's just you and your thoughts as opposed to the influence of even positive company with you. So this is a reflection of that. And so again, this work is called Parade of One. Here is, um, is, is a work that is a mixture of paint, uh, fabric that is um, adhered on there, and some sequins, and some parts of this are sewn on. But the idea of this work was to convey that feeling you have when you're laying in bed and you're looking at the ceiling and you're just thinking the thoughts that you have. And you're kind of in this place where you're either planning or you're ruminating. And so this piece is to encourage that kind of daydreaming slash dozing off. And so the way that this work is supposed to be enjoyed is with, and I'll demonstrate, just lay down. I should take my shoes off. Um, each person would take their shoes off, but um, I don't think you know you guys want to see me put my shoes on for 10 minutes. So, um, so you lay down and you just look at the work and relax. Just enjoy it. Just get lost, hopefully, in the work that you see. So, uh, these are two pillows, and so. The hope in having these two pillows here was to also convey that nighttime bed sheet kind of idea. And so the reason this is not straight is because it is reflective of how our bed sheets are always moving around motion, um, memory of someone being there, or uh, things just moving around. <laughs> well, I want to thank you all again Hang out. We're not done, but let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs>